live button. And we're live. Welcome everyone. My name is Paul Finlay and uh, welcome to Returning at Home. And this is my first live demo <laughs> on YouTube. I have done plenty of videos in the past up on, on YouTube, but never a live. Uh, I do live demos at my local club, but I never got around to coming to the lead on YouTube and actually doing a live. So this today I have the pleasure of an earworm to help me along, which is Brian Usby, and uh, I'll bring you in and good man, and introduce, and introduce Brian, uh, who's going to be helping me today. There we are. Oh, good afternoon, the man Good afternoon, it like, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it seems awful long ago from we were on screen again, you know. Yeah, it does, right? I've, by the way, I've had a few problems and we're, we're trying to sort them out. But uh, we're live now and uh, yep. the time was a wee bit mixed up and I had problems with that. So never worry about it. So I'm going to get the work on the lathe and I'm going to explain you what I'm doing. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put Brian in the background and he'll Good welcome man. you all in. Good man. Okay, everyone, this is a piece of overhead mice. camera. Overhead camera. Oh, sorry. Overhead. There this is go. a piece of ice. And uh, it's 10 inches by 2 inches. Uh, it's quite nicely figured. So it is. Uh, we have one occlusion just here. And it shows on your save. So uh, we're going to fit it to the chuck by the, by the faceplate ring. And we're going to try and make a nice wee bowl from it. Uh, I have had this piece of timber sitting in my shed for a very long time. I bought these about just before lockdown started. I bought about four blanks uh, of all of ours, but this is a nice figured one. So I like to bring the tail stuck up while I'm turning, give myself as much uh, safety as I can because you never know if it's going to let go of the place fate ring or something might happen. You know? So I'm going to bring, start rounding this. This is going to be the bottom. I'm going to change uh, over the just, tail just, stock. Just hold on for a second there, Paul. Uh, yeah. Richard from RGK Spinning Wood says, "Hi guys, there are people waiting on another thumbnail. Have you yeah, got another? I, did you? Have you got? I, I, just... That's what I think. Of, uh, I've done wrong, right. Brian. I, that's Hold what on. I was trying to I'll, explain I'll, to you. I'll, I'll try and fix that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna oh, find dear. another demo. Uh, oh. Four waiting there. All right, there you go. Right. We're, Let me just okay. uh, open that." Yeah, I need to try and get the, these people a message. To say right, okay. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, we've and got Dosh actually, Chris Dodd. Um, now, let me get, I need to get the uh, link for this one. And uh, just give me a second, Paul. Copy that link. Go there. Yeah, okay. Uh, Paul is live on this channel. Let's link, paste. We'll put it down. Right, to so the, just, uh, I've just put that link into the other live demo, so as okay. people, if people who are waiting there can see it. Uh, but it's not; it isn't live. It's just sitting there, so we can, yeah. we can sort that out later. We'll sort that out that's what it was, live. Okay. That's yeah. That's what I was worried about <laughs> when I was trying to explain to you about the the thumbnails I put up. Right. That's okay. okay. So I've I've sent I've sent them a link and hopefully they'll pop over here now. Okay. So if you want to start turning there, just okay. Um, I'll, I'll let, start. I'll let you know I'll who's in. Okay, I'll make a start here. So Good five eight old gouge. Uh, we'll just start and take some timber off this. Uh, I'm going to get my face shield on. 
Oh, excuse the noise while I adjust this around my head. Just take your time. So we've got Joe Senior in. Hi, Joe. Uh, Hi, Joe. We've got ben Jarman's in. Shane Hurst. Uh, Wee Val is in. Richard from RJK uh, Spinning Wood. Uh, who else has come in there? Wood turning with Barry is in. Good afternoon, guys. If you if you uh, if you guys would like to give uh, share this this video out to other people who maybe have missed it because Paul has created, he managed to create two links somehow. <laughs> we'll we'll figure that out later. That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're all right, Paul. Don't worry. But what is it you're doing now, Paul? Kind of... Right. I'm, what I'm doing here is just trying to round the bottom of the bowl. I'm bringing up to the, the rim here. And then I will uh, introduce a spigot, making a cannon on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're doing the outline shape that you're doing there, it's good to go on the overhead camera. Okay. Uh... So people can see what the, the shape developing. Right, you can see the shape now. There you go, that's it. Uh, so we put up out the balance this. Uh, I've managed to get up to 1100 RPMs. I can see a, the, quite a bit of wobble on this side. It's fairly out of shape. But we're not worried about the front of it until we get the bottom. Mm hmm. Good turning by Barry's in. How you doing, Barry? Hi, Barry. <laughs> ben Chalmers says, just leave them be. <laughs> That's not very nice, Ben. I'm just using the pool cut to bring that round. I'm not worried about the, the finish on it at this stage. I just want to get the initial shape. Pretty dry, this piece of wood. I started with a brand new bowl gouge. I'll just show you mm -hmm. my old boy bowl gouge here. There's nothing left on it. It won't even sharpen in the sorby sharpening machine. So I bought a new one. And uh, you always get used to the, the tool you've been using. And I'm still mm -hmm. getting used to the length on this and uh, getting the grips with it. So. It's not as uh, prudent as the way I would like it. Usually I grind the ring, wings back, but I haven't done it in this yet. But I just sharpen it because tools from the tool shop are they do new sharpening. Yep. We'll just stop that and have a wee look here and we'll see what uh, progress we're making. Yeah, that's not too bad. Very little tear out. It's got a nice bit of figure in it, for sure. Yeah. Lovely figure in it. So, we'll try and get this uh, tannin situated. So, Joe is asking you a question there. He says, what's your favourite wood to turn, Paul? I like sycamore. Uh, yeah, I like, I like sycamore I, too. It cuts, it cuts nicely. I find a very nice to turn. 
you want to go more uh, in the debate on some of the spouted ones, uh, like cherry and stuff, I find them very dusty. They can be, yep. Yeah, sycamore's nice, takes color, color well, I think. I'll just get the parting tool here and size up my tannin. Change you back and show you can see where he. So when you when you're working, ah, oh, good man, thank you. I'm just ready to tell you to do that. <laughs> Change over the spindle guys here just to clean the face of that up. Again, I'm just using a pull pot. See what that's like. Right, put that back. We'll see if I can get a nice cut on this and get it sanded. Now I'm just going forward and the push cut. Mm -hmm. I'm picking up that. Cut where I left it off. And I can tell this bull guy just not helping me any. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I do need to, the wings grind back on it and uh, yep. need to profile it. It wants correctly. to catch. It wants to catch and I'm not getting the same flow. I would have off the other one, you know. Yep. And you will find that from time to time, when you, especially when you buy a new tool. Let's see what that's like. There's a wee bit of a fiddle mark here. So we'll need to try and eliminate those. And there's five out spindle pouch here. I'm just going to try and tidy that up. I'm happy enough with the shape. Uh, it's just the, these lines, and I'm just going to use a shape scrape with the guides over in its end, and just bring that round. It's a nice little wispy shavings coming off of that. Yeah. Well, I plenty, plenty of time this morning to sharpen everything. <laughs> I've, been, I've been out here from half nine. <laughs> You should have come out. You should have come out at half eleven. Well, <laughs> sharp your tools. You stand in there panicking all day. <laughs> yeah, it's different. You can see, I'm getting wee fine shavings off that. Just to bring that round, so that I can get it sanded. What's a lot better? It's still that wee. Inclusion, but uh, it's Spiddle part of the character. Yeah, I like that. I know I'm worried about this, but because what I tend to do with the, I like to put a tannin on all my pieces, mm -hmm. and uh, some people can get uh, hung up on what to do, but uh, I think it depends what you're doing with the piece. If your tannin will be suffice or a recess. The recess is a bit awkward at times because when you turn your bow around, you have to remember you've recessed that in. And if you're not aware of it, you can make a nice funnel out of your bow. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> and, yep. and I've done that twice over the eight years I've been turning. And uh, 
it's not hey, nice when you spend all that time on your boat. So it, it pays to pay attention, think about uh, what cannon or token point you're going to put on your piece and how you're going to finish it. Because uh, a lot of people uh, I've noticed they'll put the, the tannin on and when they come to turn the bowl around and take the inside out, they, they tend to find that uh, they haven't thought, how am I going to hold this or how am I going to mount this to get it uh, on the chuck again to take the tannin off yeah. or reduce the, the depth of it. So all these things you uh, have to consider into your, your turning. And a lot of people make uh, weed drawings and stuff. We have had a, many a discussion in the weed shed about uh, uh, doing drawings. And uh, I say, the drawings in my head, and I just go with it. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because you can change your mind as you're turning, you know. Uh, any drawing is just a guideline. You have to see what develops yeah. as you're turning. We've got Andrew from Wavy uh, Woodshed then. Good afternoon, Andrew. Welcome. Welcome along. Just want to check that wee bit. Right. Okay. I'm going to take it, the tail stock away. The other part about bringing your tail stock up, I'm just getting rid of this face shield to get me back on it. Uh, my headset back on again. Uh, <coughs> it gives you a center point to come back to. So if you're going to mount your your blank onto uh, uh, a face plate uh, piece of wood and bring your tail stock, you can center it off that. Or yep. if you're going to set a cool jaws or something, you can use your center point to bring it up and then adjust your cool jaws. To get make sure you got it on at center. So I'm just going to tidy that tannin up and then we'll get it uh, sanded. I'm just not going to do a whole lot of sanding, but yeah, it's always good to leave here. that little center mark in there so as you can remount it onto a pressure plate or gold jaws, etc. Yep. 100% right yep. there. Because things can happen <laughs> along the way that uh, you don't actually, uh, you haven't accounted for. So that'll let me mount that onto the the chuck in a wee minute. And we'll get some sanding done to it here. So Ben, ben Jammer has just commented, he says, <coughs> sorry guys, but I'm having trouble with the really strong accent. Uh, I, it can be hard to understand. Could Brian <laughs> please speak more slowly? <laughs> yeah, shut up, <laughs> Okay. That's our, that's our Ben. I don't uh, expect do anything you... less from Ben. I thought he was talking about me. No, he's not. <laughs> My accent can be very bad at times. Right. It's fine. I've Nothing got wrong with dust extraction it. on. <laughs> we'll get this. Extractor's working well. Just checking before I move on to the next grit. There's nothing major that needs any more sanding with the 80 grit. Good. Uh, it was take quite your, a good finish take, off the tool. Take your time, Paul. You've only been going 19 minutes, so take your time. Don't rush. Roy, the boy's in. Good afternoon, Roy. Good afternoon, Roy. I was watching your wee video last night. You are cleaning your workshop up. <laughs> Roy, if he was cleaning his workshop up, he's got a long way to go. Uh, <laughs> he's, his workshop's nearly as bad as Paul Cavan's. A wee bit, wee bit there needs an hour. A 
lots of fibre in this piece of wood. It is nice now. I, uh, it is indeed, I, yeah. See, once we'll put finish on it, it'll, it'll just pop out, so it will. Mm -hmm. Todd from Glen Cove works us in. Hi, Todd. Right. That was one twenty, uh, one eighty. Roy the boy says, I was talking to Roy this morning and he says, I've, uh, he says, uh, I've made the handle for that small gauge. Well done, right? He was uh, making a handle out of uh, a bit of Barocco, I think, or was it Supili? Supili, I think. <clears throat> Raymond Wise is in. Good evening, Raymond. Good afternoon, Raymond. Good afternoon, Raymond. Thanks for coming over. And Amy's in. Amy of the D Angels. Hi, Amy. All the way from Australia. Australia. Mm hmm. It was Sapelli, Roy says. Yeah, I thought it was. <clears throat> Mr. G's wood turning is in. Okay, that's me done with a 180. Oh. Go to 240 and just take your time and check out after each uh, grit and see if there's anything you've missed before moving on because if you go to the, the 400 and then you have to you find that you have to go back a couple of grits and it's a pain in the neck Can't be. nobody likes sanding you know it's a necessary evil for wood turners. Yeah. Yeah, I have to sand the piece to get it finished correctly. We we had our pla the pleasure of uh, Emmett Kane on Saturday at the Ulster oh, yeah. Return Club. And uh, Emmett doesn't do any sanding. Have you seen yep. any of his videos? I, uh, everything's with chainsaws and angle grinders and, you know, <laughs> And blow torches. Yeah, that's a good way to go. My texture pieces. Mm. If he you want does a, a nice, good demo. He does. Uh, if you want a nice uh, shiny finish on a, a smooth shiny finish, you're gonna have to sand. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no way of getting around it. Nope. There's a wee bit here. I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna. Uh, we take taking that away as I take the foot down uh, away. I'll be sanding that later. Uh, 240 C8. Oh. Uh, what was that grit you're using there, Paul? C80. C80. Or C20, sorry. C20. Yeah, that's what I thought. You, I thought you said 380, but C20. I don't know where I got the PAE for them. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <can't> I? <laughs> I thought I'd missed something. That is nice now. I like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's Grit 400. Uh, These wee pads are a nuisance. If you pull them too hard, you start breaking them from in between here. Yeah, and no, start you start pulling the Velcro off. Kind of got to hold on to it and just peel it off gently. Yeah, and uh, peel it off. <clears throat> they're, they're really softy ones, but 
the ones that you've got there. The, the foam's kind of soft. The ones that um, Simon Hope does, I've got a denser foam on them. And they kind of hold together. Well, they, if, well, if they are, if, Simon Hope. So they are, but uh, uh, the, I've changed that the little, pads. That little red pad you have there is, is, is nearly too soft. The thing, the thing about that too is if you're pressing too hard, you generate too much heat and that, yep. loose, that, that softens the glue. So the, the best plan is to just use your sandpaper gently, not don't press on it, don't lean on it. So you're trying not to generate heat. Okay, I think that's just sand and done. Okay, we'll get a taste of sand sealer on that. Uh, no color today, then. Oh, no color so on the back. No natural wood today. Uh, right, that's just an ordinary sand sealer. I mix by sand sealer with 50 50 uh, cellular right. thinners. I think a chestnut uh, sand sealer is, a ten, is too thick. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I think most people. Get, most people, apart from uh, the, the um, <laughs> apart from Terry himself, um, kind of thin um, chestnut sanding sealer. I certainly would um, thin it as well. I I, I use sixty forty though. This is it. Everybody's got their own. Uh... Yep. Michelle's in. Mix. Good afternoon, Michelle. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit like it's a bit like tools. You kind of build a preference for something, uh, and tend to use that all the time. Yeah, you find if it works for you, just stay with it. Exactly. Roy the boy yeah. says he does his sixty forty. Depends on the make. Really, because some of them are very weak and some of them are very thick. Well, Mr. G's just come back. He says 50-50 for him. Yep, it's a, again, it's a, an absolute a personal preference here. Whatever you think. And sometimes you might have to thin it out a bit more for, for a denser wood or something if you want to get it to soak in better. But yeah, it's just... Whatever you feel like yourself. I'm nearly scared to bring this out. Seeing Joe's here. Ho, ho. No, Joe. Uh, well, well, the good thing is, it's only Glenn that's going to hear her singing. <laughs> we taste the Yorkshire get grit. <coughs> now, I'm going to tell you something. Now. But if you're uh -huh. using, if you're going to use Yorkshire grit, you only need to sand to two forty. Yorkshire grit starts at three twenty. And goes up to a thousand. So and when you're when you're using your sanding grits, I, the, my sanding regime is um, eighty. Start at eighty or one twenty, depending on how good I've been with the tool. Uh, one twenty, yeah. one eighty, two forty, and then your grit. That's what I do. And Amy is asking, are you a southpaw, Paul? A what? A southpaw. You left-handed? Right-handed. Yeah, there you go. Shane Huff says, sing, Joe, loud. <laughs> <laughs> I Be careful, boys, because I could easily send Joe the link and get her in here, you know. <laughs> You can see the residue coming off. Uh, what speed you want to make sure. That, what speed have you got that uh, on that, Paul? 920. Right. So for a bowl that size, you want to be turning the speed down to around between five and 600 
to allow the grit time to work. If you're spinning it too fast, you're just kind of wiping it straight back off again. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're using it on a small spindle like a pen or something, you can turn the speed up a bit because I mean the, you've got loads of grit. But when it's going over such a large surface, and you don't forget the outside that bow is spinning at a yeah. far faster rate, um, you kind of just you can you can overheat the the, the wax and stuff, and it, it doesn't really do the same job. So slower for just, a while, and then you can speed it up towards the end. Well, I've done it. Turn it down to 600 there, yeah, and okay. uh, put it down to uh, nerves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We know it doesn't matter. Easy. Not easy. <laughs> yeah. It just looks easy. Some people make it look ridiculously easy. You know, like Terry. It just And Steve. Wayne. All these guys. They just make it look ridiculously easy. When and, and actually like there's not. Turn that racket off. <laughs> now, I only... A lot of people put oils and stuff on. I used to make a crystalline wax. That's all I use. And uh, I like to finish a, a, an item in a day. If you use oil, you have to let it dry. And then... Well, if you're, if you're using... Yeah. Um, if you use <coughs> if you use Yorkshire grit, um, you, you really need to wipe it down with methylated spirits before you try and use an oil finish over the top of it. Because the, the wax yeah. and the grit will seal the pores. So uh, it's best if you're oiling not to use Yorkshire grit. Sand to 400 and then use oil. That's what I would always do anyway. Wood turning my body says, doing a live is not easy. And Amy says, you're doing awesome, Paul. Come on, it's everyone. Not easy. The thumbs up button for Paul. We're, we were just talking about before we started. And I've done loads of demos on my local club. Mm -hmm. And it's different when you have about 40 people sitting in front of you looking at you because you're going to react with the, the audience a bit more yeah. but when you're doing it live on youtube you know where the people are there but you, you just can't yeah, interact you're just talking to a camera same. basically aren't you yeah that yep. stuff is uh, totally different Just turn that up. Yep. Oh, doesn't want to behave. It's a thousand RPMs. About the fastest I get that. It's still quite out of balance I, in the I, front here. I don't ever turn a bowl more than well. I, I never say never, but normally I wouldn't turn a bowl any more between any more than between eight and a thousand revs. Yeah. Well, usually when I polishing the wax off and like to get a wee bit more speed on it but the size of the bowl and the shape of the bowl will dictate uh, what speed you can actually mm -hmm. manage to get to you know right even though even though the bowl is perfectly round if you've got some kind of inclusions and stuff in it it may still well be unbalanced some bits of the wood are denser than others so that I'm could cause gonna... it to be unbalanced I'm just going to clean the, the end of this tannin up because uh, I, I got quite a bit of wax on it there. Mm -hmm. I'll just use a parting tool to tidy that up. We, we've all said you're doing well, Paul. Thank you. So, <laughs> all these guys are on your side, so I hope to feel nervous. Uh, so you intend to come on uh, regularly at, at one o'clock on a Monday, or? I am gonna try to. Good man. Once a week. Just taking that back to the natural wood. Stud is in. <clears throat> he says good day, fellow wood folk. That's another one from Australia. Got a good Australian contingent in today. Have your clocks went uh, changed yet um, in Australia, Amy, Chris, Jane? Do, 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 North America do, do, have changed their clocks. They're they're already on summertime. 
Uh, it's great when the late nights come in again. Yep. Well, we're not changing until the 26th. Yeah. Barry's Wood Creations is in. He says, hi, Paul, Brian, and all in the chat. Sorry I'm late. Yeah, never worry about being late, buddy. I wouldn't worry too much because uh, I, I messed the time up and two wrong thumbnails <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that. That part of it, that part I haven't mastered yet. <laughs> we'll just give that a wee turn. It's only the first time, so big. It's quite a steep learning curve. That's okay. It's behaving okay. It's not too bad because you, you didn't flatten the front face anyway. You didn't, so. No, I didn't true the let's face go, up. Let's go to the uh, tail stop camera for this bit. Right. Is that camera position <laughs> okay for everybody? I can yeah. bring it closer yeah, if you want. Good. No, it's fine. Okay. It's good. Right. I think we're okay. If anybody okay. in the chat complains, I'll let you know. Chris Dodd says, right. no, in Queensland, we have our own time, different to every, elsewhere in Australia. Yeah, no, you want to make Queenslanders. You want to make sure you're on centre. Oh, on so center. Amy says it's 11.44 for Dodds, eh? In Queensland, and 0.044 for me in Victoria. Oh, God. It's the middle of the night for Amy. I, I, I sometimes think Amy has no bed to go to. But we enjoy the pleasure of our company. <laughs> Todd says, so today is tomorrow for Amy. Yep. A A Amy's in the future. Oh, it's all good, good bit on that. Design in mind for this bowl? Yes, uh, I'm going to put uh, a wee rim, rim, wide rim, about an inch. And uh, using the, the wee, where are they? Uh, I got myself some of these chameleon flakes. All right. So we're going to color the, the outside the of that with cool. the rim. Excellent. Oh, bacon soda's in. Hello, bacon soda. Still not quite in. Yep. Oh. Your wraith will tell you if it's too fast when it starts bouncing around. <laughs> and you bit, just yeah. need to back it back it off a wee bit. Just it settles down a wee bit. Uh, um, Roy the boy has just usually, said the Sorry, go ahead, Paul. Usually there's a lot of people I've come across on YouTube uh, make the terrible mistake of not listening uh, to the world what the lathe is telling them and the, the tool and just play on if you mm. think there's a different noise and it changes its pitch or some for some reason stop the lathe and look and see if there's anything that's happened or has your chuck you loosened because the, the the screws on your jaws can loosen it from time to time i've had that happen once or twice i mean I just picked it up by chance. I took the bow off and 
right enough, the, the hook jaw was loose, so the wee grub screws need to tighten it again. So wee things like that, you need to keep an eye on everything. It's just not, a matter. It's just not the point of putting a piece of timber in the, the chuck jaws and then turning it. You have to make sure everything is uh, as it should be before you start. So, so baking soda is Brendan. Uh, your baking soda is Brendan. Yep. Well, thanks very much, Brendan, for coming along. Shane Hurst is in Tennessee, in the States, and he, they changed their times yesterday. They did indeed. North America and Canada. Right, at this stage, I'm going to leave. <laughs> Brent, Brendan just is. says no. no bother. <laughs> Brendan's William Kenny's joined us. Good afternoon, William. Brendan's one of my fellow members of the Ulster Wheat Turners. Ulster Wheat Turner, yeah. Aye. I so, know. Uh, I think I'm not going to do a wade. I want to keep a, an, an edge to here. So I'm thinking about. Oh, Brian Best, then. Somewhere about there. Okay. <laughs> and Good afternoon, Brian. I'm going to. I'm going to do a wee bit of texture in this as well. Oh, good. Using one of these wee articles. I first ordered the, the wrong one, and uh, I'll show you. Uh, <clears throat> it works it's just as well, but it's uh, the bigger one. So it cuts all bar. Yeah, it cuts all bar. Yeah. So I meant, I meant to order this one and cut that one instead. So oh, that's I've a had a wee go. I've had a wee go at that one, the bigger one, and it's quite aggressive, so it mm -hmm. is. And uh, depending on what you, I would say uh, to use it on more hardwoods. I was trying to use yeah. it on a bit of pine and a bit of uh, ice, and it sort of didn't want to do that. Okay. Richard Fielding's in. Good afternoon, Richard. So I'm just going to mark this right round. So right. just bear with me. Well, we need to lock that. You will. And the cancel lines are only a gay line because when you start texturing anything, you always go over the line. So you're leaving your wee bit, yourself a wee bit of room to correct it. See, when I normally do this, when I am adding the piece, I would fast forward to this, and you know, you think I'm getting done half the time, you know? It takes a wee bit of time. Like a little symphony going on there. Sounds like a little skin you says. Uh, take, your take your time, Paul, there's no rush. Uh, Richard, the food's not so bad today, I have to say. It's, uh, it's 
it's improving every day, thankfully. Uh, I can get my shoes and stuff on, <laughs> which is always good. Yeah, I was going to ask the, I was going to ask the same question. Uh, what's, what's what's that? Today? <laughs> You're all right, Paul. Well, I'm talking to the chat. I can't hear what this uh, I know. machine. You're all right. You, go, you work away. Thanks for coming over. And, and Rob from Clang Sporter Brazos is in. Good afternoon, Rob. Just a matter of going round and seeing if you've left any wee flat back on the wood. I'm just hitting it again. Okay, I think that will do that. Good, Glad good. to get rid of that. <coughs> <coughs> going for, we're just coming up on 50 minutes, Paul. So you're doing really well for time. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. So I'm just going to give that a wee light sand, uh, a piece of 400, just to knock all the fuzzy bits off. Fuzzy bits off. I have to get myself one of these... Uh, we wheels, you know, the yeah. nylon wheels. I haven't got one of those. I was thinking of buying a set of them too, but I just never get around to it yet. It's just after seeing uh, Emmett use them on Saturday, you know, yep. they're a good thing to have mm -hmm. because they, they pull all those wee bits of fuzz out of the actual piece, you know. 
AliExpress, so, says Brendan. Is that right? Have a look on Ali, AliExpress, you'll get them there. Very cheap, he says. Good. Uh, now, I'm going to put some black thistle on this. And I've done a couple of wee things before uh, to try these colours out. And the way I went about it is the wrong way. <laughs> 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 so that's a, that's a uh, learning curve what I, right there. What I, what I mean is, I distinctly put a line, my uh, border lines, in at mm -hmm. this stage. Uh, I found when you put your black dustle on and you go to uh, tidy the edge up and start your inside, you, you sometimes don't get it uniformed and it can be out. So I'm just going to paint this bit black first and then put my lines in and my, I'll burn them with a bit of formica, just a, the black and the line. And then we'll put the, the gilding uh, adhesive on it and put those wee chameleon flakes on it. So that's two wee things I was just testing with. And they're okay, but... Uh, it's uh, all these things need to be tested and worked with and to see what works best. So Brendan said people... that. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. So Brendan said there he, he uh, after uh, he was watching Emmett at the weekend, and he recommended AliExpress. Uh, but and uh, Brendan says I got loads of stuff for low money last night. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan's had a shopping hey. spree last night by the sounds of it. <laughs> yep. This is... Uh, uh, just... I've got a question for you. Mr. G okay. uh, Woodturning wants to know what size the bit was you were using. Uh, where's the box in that one? Uh, uh, let's see. I don't actually tell you the size. Uh, did not come sort of small, medium and large or something? Well, that's a small... It's... It just says a one eighth shaft. Uh, I think yeah. it's a quarter inch. I think it's quarter inch. It's well, or you, a you wee bit. Me a smile, so I can't look it up. A wee bit uh, more on it, you know. Yeah, about six mil cut or something. I uh, I would say about six mil. Yeah. <clears throat> right. I this think they come in small, medium, and large, but I think. Uh, not, yeah. Don't quote me. They do. They do. Uh, black Jessel. Uh, seen Tar using this and I uh, thought I would get some. So you want to paint this into all the wee nooks and crannies. This is why I said don't bother doing the lines, because you're going to clean that up afterwards. Uh, if you do it and then you find you have to take more wood than you want away, uh, sometimes it can lead to problems. So I'm going to try it this way to see am I right or not. And uh, you only learn by doing these things and uh, trying them out for the first time. So this is merely about the third time I've used this black thistle on a, a piece. And uh, I like the idea of it because I usually sprayed the, the texture with the black paint. Uh, I didn't use the abonizing lacquer because I, I find it very expensive and it doesn't seem to last for long. Uh, same as the lacquers. Uh, you're talking about ten pound a time, and uh, you can surely uh, work your way through a ten in one afternoon. You know. Hmm. So I've just had a quick so look I, at the Cut Soul website there, and they do three different sizes, and it's quarter inch, three eighths, and one inch are the three sizes. So yours will be a quarter inch, a six small one. Yeah, I think small one. And you have the one inch one there as well. Yeah, the one inch one. Uh, the one inch one has a quarter inch shaft though, so it wouldn't fit in a Dremel. No, it won't fit. Uh, it does fit in my wee machine, because I've got the, I can change the. You have a little the, chuck thing on the end of it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I can yep. change the, the, the wee flute thing. Uh, I have a collet. Collet. That's the name of it. Just escape me for That's the a word. second there. You know. 
So this could be the tedious bit of any job, uh, putting this black and uh, trying to keep it all the same. See, if you were trying to keep this in between the lines, there's no way. You would. Take half a day. <laughs> yep. And this dries right and quick as well. It does. And so once you get it on, so well, that, that gesso is an is an atlas preparation, is basically is for preparing canvas, and it's yeah, it, it dries that's, really quick, is right. That's what it is, and it covers everything. Mm -hmm. So if he didn't he didn't get the, a wee bit covered right, <clears throat> and uh, that's good to change the angle on the piece to see if you get all the wee shapes. And I into, into it, your get it all into the yep. texture. Yeah. Yeah. And just go over again and make sure you got it. There's one there I missed. Just spin it round and you can the light will shine and then you'll see the uh, a flat spot appearing and uh, just didn't get any paint. So Raymond Weiss thinks it's a lovely piece of wood. Doesn't it? It is. Uh I maybe should have left it the way it was. And just finished it clean, but uh, I already said I was going to texture and paint it. So, oh God! Wow. Uh, you all right? Yep. I knocked the pot over. Oh no! Not all over the floor. Uh, well, I landed in the shavings by oh. Black Hand. Oh, uh, should have put my gloves on. I have a habit of setting things on the lathe bed and oh, then my pet hate. knock it over. That's my pet no matter hate. what it is, usually it's sand sealer or paint or some kind. So it is. Uh, just bear with me while I... Just, just while he um, cleans his hands, folks, you'll be all right. Be back in a minute. <laughs> yeah. I, just a smite, slight inconvenience there. I was just I was just going to lift it, you see. I had mm -hmm. to put and the lid on off. it and knocked it off. I just cleaned the it didn't lose too much out of it. Brendan says I'm first I'll have to go and watch this tonight. Have a good day everyone. You too, Brendan. All right, Brendan. Have Thank you. Day. Talk to you later. Oh dear. Right, so Give that a wee spin. Well, I like clean this brush. <laughs> Pet Chapman says, I spilt a, a full container of lemon oil all over my wooden shed floor once. Best mistake I ever made. <laughs> yep, smelt nice. <clears throat> shed smelt nice for a while. Yeah. Just washing this wee brush out. Well, let's spin in there. Uh -huh. Why are you spinning it, Paul? To help it dry. To help it dry, okay. You know? Create a bit so, of wind on it. I, you know, I normally use my heat gun, but my heat gun is uh, not here. It's in the woodshed. Because oh. we had a, a job using it for there, and I didn't bring it home again. How far right, away so, from the woodshed are you, Paul? It's only 15 minutes up the road. All right, okay. You know, it's not that far. Mm. It's so about than 15 uh, minutes for me. <laughs> it's about six, six miles all the gear. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's not far. Right, okay. See what uh, uh, <laughs> Todd of Glen Cove says I had to dispose of about forty gallons of vanilla extract. <laughs> the dumpster never smelt so good. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> right. So I can put my wee line in here now, which and then I can work on the bowl self mm -hmm.
and that teddy's the outside up a uh, wee bit deeper there I need to go uh, still not cleared yet so the, the actual taxed bit is going to be raised yep sitting 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 a little bit proud sitting proud just check that again before I move on to the next spot uh, and the thing about the the jassel, it doesn't bleed as much. If you use paint, you would find that it, uh, it bleeds into the grain in mm -hmm. places, and you're left with a, another problem of trying to tidy it up. So I'm just going to use a skew here to clean the, the edge of this up, and that's Gee. taking a whole lot off. <coughs> no, you're just but using your skew like a negative brake scraper there. That's Yep. And uh, just so that you see the true colour of it. See, the, the wee bits that stand out are, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the overhead. You might. See here where I used the, the wee mm -hmm. colour? There's a wee dimple there and it's going in. And the black's in it. So this is what I was saying about the, the burning the line. So what I done the last time was bring that down and put your formica on this end so it, it all looks black instead of having okay. that natural yeah. wood. I know, you know? The edge. Yep. That I, we edge, so it needs to go down a wee bit more to allow me to get that actual. Well, that's just what I have come up with. It mightn't be. Right, but I think it's it different. works okay. It's different to what yeah. everybody else. I mean, everybody else just burns it and then tries to paint within the lines. That's see, what I some see of them, mostly. See, this is what the, you get. There's one here, and you Did can you see change, it on the screen. The camera again? You can see it ah, there, yeah, I've seen, anyway. Yep, yep. And <clears throat> here, here, and here, there's three wee black marks. Yep. And and that is. You can see it, looking face on at it, you wouldn't see it. But when I burn the line here, hopefully that'll eliminate that wee ridge here mm. and make it black. Okay. Well, that's what I'm hoping to do. That's the plan. I just need to be, that's the plan. Where it works or not, I don't know. Uh, Roy, Roy the boy's asking what the wood is. It's ice. Piece of ice. Uh, Never get two colours the same. I uh, there's another piece of ice, and it's a totally different colour. But yep. there's more figure in that piece, you know, and uh, it's there's a lot of figure uh, in that piece, right? Yeah, I, it didn't actually. <coughs> when I first looked at it, it didn't look didn't look that appealing, did it? No. It sort of worked. It doesn't stand out as much, but I just need to clean a wee bit of that up. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. Good, good. Right. So, I'll well, let that dry, and we'll concentrate in. The center piece. I'll take the bowl out. I'll turn that off now. Okay, we'll start to take this out. So I have made a wee relief cut here on this. I'm just gonna make it a wee bit deeper so my tool doesn't skate back and ruin all my good work.
That's 1200 RPM. I'm just taking the wood down in steps here. You want to leave the weight of the wood in the center while you're, especially if you're working on a large piece, and it helps stable the bowl as you do the outside as it gets thinner. <laughs> ben Jams, Ben Jams, having to go. He says, yeah, "Have to go." Great life, Paul, uh, and I guess also a brief thank you to Brian as well. Oh, yeah, cheers, Ben. All the best. Have a good day, man. So I just can't get used to that new gauge. That's the grind that Emma, the tiny tunnel, uses all the time. Yeah, as I say, when you're used to some for so long and then you mm -hmm. change to a new tool, that uh, it can throw you out a wee bit. Well, it throws me out anyway. Just want to get. More, more here. Let's see what that's like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just taking it down gradually. No need to rush. You've been going for an hour and ten minutes now. Right. So we're buying on schedule here. Yep.
And just to increase the speed there, I'd like to turn a wee bit faster than normal. Anybody? I like I like a wee bit more speed. So Raymond Weiss is suggesting that you can make your own black gesso, and thin down wood glue, add talcum powder, and black acrylic paint. Okay. There you go. If you've if you've run out, that's a that's one way you get it. Make some. I don't think it's all that expensive to buy anyway. No, it's not that dear. And Roy wants to know what speed you're turning at. 1600 RPMs. Keeping an eye on the bottom here. We'll take this last bit out and then we'll get a final depth on Check it. Yeah. 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 It's just a wee voice in your head says, and are we cut? Yeah, one more. And cut. usually, <laughs> usually it's the wrong, wrong wee message in your head mm -hmm. saying. And that's when you find out that you've gone through the bottom. Right. It's not going to happen today. No. Well, well, we'll try and not. <laughs> no, it's not. Well. Uh, I'm reckoning I'm close enough. <laughs> so we'll just need to tidy that up a wee bit. So we'll get the scraper and right no scraper and tidy the bottom of that up. <coughs> and you want to raise your tool rest. So what you're lifting the handle up and forcing down. So we'll see what that's like. That needs a wee bit more. I'll just turn the lathe down a wee bit. 1200 RPM. And Roy the boy is suggesting it would take him two hours to get to this point, or possibly longer. Up and have a look and see. The good thing about wood turning is it's not a race. So you see that figure in there? Yep, we can indeed. That's lovely. That's stunning. Absolutely lovely. It is a nice piece of wood. <clears throat> Sometimes when you go in and buy a piece of wood and you lift it up and it's looking to be the ugliest piece of wood you've ever seen, and you start turn it into it and you find that it's got lovely wood inside. Mr G is asking you what uh, sharpening system do you like using Paul? I pr use the Pro Edge. Yeah, uh, when it, I first it, started it, turning it. I was using the angle grinder with a, a homemade jig for the, or the bull gouges and stuff. Uh, but I thought it was doing all right when I uh, first started with it. Yeah. And uh, when I got the, the pro edge and started going to the correct angle, I could see how much I was off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the actual angle. Right. Oh, I'm Richard made it up. into his workshop yesterday. He says he made two bowls yesterday. Well done, Richard. William, William made a whole lot more bowls than that. 
that was a sad. Well, they're not finished, they're only cored. William's been playing with his code, the coding system alone. Them. Right. <laughs> he made uh, 13 okay, balls out of six, so that was good. <clears throat> Richard says, first time he's been in the shed working since Christmas. Wow, that's a long time out, Richard. Well, I'm always in the shed. I mean, that's okay. I need sanding. Uh, I just. <clears throat> we'll give out a quick sand. That should be dry enough to get the, the size on. Oh, Andy Bundy Rose in. Good afternoon, Andy. And Dave from Mo Valley says he made four bows yesterday. Biggest was about 80 millimetres diameter. 80 millimetres? 10 centimetres. 80 millimetres. That's not very big. Just over three inches. Did you make a set of bowls? Andy's in, so where's Lucy? That's what I want to know. Right. <coughs> So we'll just start with 80 grit. I would like to say my turning is, I could start at 240, but it's it's not. So it's not know. bad it's... off the tool. It uh, looks quite good. Practice, practice. That's what it's all about. Grant, practice and practice. Yep. And you, exactly and you will is. get better at it. I wouldn't say I'm yeah. perfect, but I like to think that I'm improving every time I do it. Two two things <clears throat> that I feel are essential for to become a good wood turner is that you need to practice a lot, but you also need to go and get instruction from somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. Because you can practice a thing wrong forever and it'll still be wrong. And the trouble is, Brian, I've been watching uh, a brief few videos of professional turners on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And they all they all seem to have a different method for uh, using their tools and mm -hmm. sanding and stuff. They do. And they all they all contradict themselves. So you don't know who who's right and who's wrong. Well. The, the, the thing about professional turners is, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, professional turners should be teaching people the, the real basic um, how to use the tools correctly. So proper tool presentation, etc. Yeah. Rather than rather than trying to teach people fancy stuff that they can't handle yet. So if you go down to somebody like Glenn Lucas, he, he takes you through turning a bowl. Uh, and he teaches you the correct way to use uh, the bowl gouge, etc. And, and all good instructors will do that, I think. Make sure that your basic tools are so like golf. If your if your basic swing is not right, you can't modify it. You can't, it's just wasting your time, you know. You got to get I the basics the, right. <clears throat> I had the lathe in reverse there just to give me a bit a uh, better direction on that. There's a like a wee divot here. Well, I think it's, it's come out okay. Richard Field, what does Richard say? Richard says he, he, he made uh, his bowl were a 350 mil round. With a live edge, a laburnum piece. Oh, that's a big laburnum piece. I need to see pictures of that, Richard, right enough. And Richard says, I have a load of green beech that he must core. Get at it. Get after it, Richard.
It wasn't overly advanced, right? You know, we just we basically we just made uh, a nice bowl and a nice platter. It was a really good, uh, really good couple of days. Excellent fight. Oh, the beach was three fifty. Le Bon was only a hundred fifty. Ah, there. Of course, that's a big piece of Le Bon, Richard. <laughs> okay, that's that was one eighty, two forty, just a. Do the outside of the rim. And he says that Lucy's at the hospital, has a hospital appointment, and I just had an injection at the doctor's, and he's now waiting to pick up the children. I hope Lucy's okay. That was 240. Oh, uh, this picture's going round then, is it? So why have I not seen this picture yet? <coughs> Mr. Phelan. Right, hopefully that's all the sand and done. I got <coughs> that turned off. Mr. G is asking a question there. He says, um, uh, do you keep your speed up at 1600 when you're doing your sanding, Paul? No, I turned it down to 1000 RPM. Okay, I, I would, personally, I would normally sand somewhere between 7, 750. Somewhere See? around there. It's just about, uh, again, it's about not generating heat. Yeah. Everybody mm. has their own idea. And they do, yep. And it's whatever works for you, you know, mm. uh, that's why I look at it. Right, the boy says he's had a blood test today. And he got physio on Wednesday. Oh. Physio terrorism. Uh, I just removed a couple of wee furry fuzzy bits from the edge the here. Rim. Yeah, from the inside of the rim. Uh, uh, I think I got them. Right, we'll give that a wee taste of sand sealer. And I think, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll put the <coughs> this size on, on the paint. And while I'm putting the sand sealer on the Yorkshire grit in the, the bowl, that will give it time to go off a wee bit. Right. Uh, Richard says right. he only worries about heat when he's dealing with you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you will crack if you overheat it, obviously. So, Cherry. But uh, I, I'm thinking more about the heat on the, the, the sandpaper. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't help with the uh, the adhesive that keeps the sandpaper and the, the rubber backing pad and everything together. Now this is just a uh, gilding, gilding adhesive. Just make sure you get it well in the, the wee bits. Mm -hmm. I've got an appointment with the physio terrorist. And the 4th of April is the earliest I can get one. Seven. So 
So Rob from Plains Floor says uh, that heat and water are the two things that kill sandpaper. Absolutely. And Richard says, what adhesive is that you're using, Paul? It's a gilding adhesive for gold leaf and... Gold leaf size? It's, yeah, it's a size and it's a water-based one. Mm -hmm. So it goes on white, but when it starts to drag, it goes clear. You don't see that. You don't see the white. Uh, um, right, the boy saying question, Paul. What re what's the reason you are putting on the color on now rather than he didn't? The color was put on before he turned the middle out, uh, Roy, and now he's just adding some size. He's going to use the chameleon flakes on it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> put the color on first, and and it gives you the opportunity to work on the rest of the bowl and give that time to dry before you put your size on and uh, you and then i'm going to fall back and put sand sealer on that and a wee piece of yorkshire grit on the inside of that and just the wax and then we'll put the chameleon flakes on the top of this yeah you've got a little size be, time to dry yeah Paper yeah it anyway. goes a wee bit tacky mm -hmm. so barry something to go for blood tests on wednesday as well my goodness there's a whole lot of blood testing going on. Yeah, so fortunately, it's a, it's when you start getting old. <laughs> you oh, don't mention for, the old. Oh, don't mention the old. Oh, you go for loads of things. <laughs> right, that's that uh, covered. So, I just go around and check any big bits that are still nice and white. Rub them out a wee bit. You can see that's it's clearing up. Uh, so just a wee bit of So we'll put a wee taste of sun sealer on this, and then <clears throat> I'm looking for it. Uh, <laughs> we were doing a, an outside demo last week, uh, or two weekends ago up mm -hmm. uh, in uh, a local church in Ballyneur and uh, it's called a Bally Nature Day when all the, the thing the beekeepers and people like that, way left trust oh, yeah. and people come in. Uh, so they asked us a couple of years ago and we've been doing it ever since, we've been uh, five years doing it. And Very good. It, takes a, it gives us the opportunity to go up and do a bit of demonstrating and showing or work off and this lady came round and she was saying oh that's lovely what is it uh, and that's i says there that's a piece of you oh, God. and that's a, a, and that's a piece of you <laughs> and she says what do you mean it's a piece of me <laughs> <laughs> you mean, no the, the the word is you actually you uh, that's, that's that's what the the word is uh, from a yew tree. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. uh, Just have to be careful with the rose thinners here and this uh, sun sealer because if you hit the black, you will rub, yeah, rub, it off. rub in. Yeah. So take your time. Usually, if I'm really want it to be 100%, I would tape this off and do any sun sealer I need to do and the waxing and then peel a bit of tape off. The fact that you have a wee groove around this and put the, your, your tape on, this is what I usually do, put the tape on and then with a Stanley knife, of course you've got a groove there, just lightly go around it with your, your knife and pull the excess tape off and then just fill your, do what you need to do on the outside. And then when you've done that, you can take it off, you know. But uh, Dave from Mo Valley is starting to get back into his workshop. He's just had a delivery of blast gates and brackets from Chelmwood. So he's off to fit them in his workshop. You have a good afternoon, Dave. Right, we'll just jump out of the We spin. We 
just a Yorkshire grit. Oh, good man. Yeah. That's reassuring. Thank you. An ophthalmologist. Lucy's off to see today. Slow that down a wee bit. So Barry's with him. Says he's been waiting. Um, He's been waiting for 14 days to get a blood test. That's, that's shocking. It really is. And Roger Kent has joined us. Good afternoon, Roger. Good afternoon, Roger. Thank you for coming over. This is my first live demo. <laughs> it is indeed. First live YouTube demo. Yeah. yeah. I made plenty of videos, but never done a live. <laughs> Right, the boy's going back into his shed this afternoon. He's going to make a handle for the thread chaser. Ooh, interesting. He bought a thread chaser at the weekend when he was at New York. <clears throat> at the show, many of you other guys went to New York, no? I know Lucy and Andy did. Right. It's good if you have a nails on your thumb. And you can just put it into the groove with the the paper. Uh, the paper. Yep. yep. We don't have any nails then. You just have to do your best. Mr. James at New York at the weekend. Did you buy anything exciting? <clears throat> These shows are a good trap. Get you in there and you're there all day, so it's hard to resist spending money. <clears throat> Right, we'll just put a wee bit of wax on that and then uh, we can put that chameleon flakes on. I have these chameleon flakes, but I haven't used them yet. <sighs> uh, I bought a wee set of five and mm -hmm. they're so different I colours. To, I, I've seen Steve using them, so... I went on to eBay and got a set, but they're not the same colors he has. But there's no a lot of colors, you know. There is, yeah. <laughs> Chris Dodd says, Paul, at least you're taller than Terry, so we don't have to look at the top of your head. <laughs> 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 Poor Terry, he's not even here. He's not here to defend himself. So that's that waxed. So, you ready for the chameleon flakes? Nah. Uh, where's my brush? Uh, I need to get a brush. I think I'll. Oh no. I haven't used this color before. Now, to me. <laughs> it looks like a greeny, purpley blue. Okay. You know. So we shall see in a moment. Got, I haven't got the right glasses on, but you can see it shimmer there. You know, it's yep. like more like a green, but there's purple in it, uh, mm -hmm. depending on what way the the light hits it. So you dip your wee brush in, and it goes everywhere. And it goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And as I say, you're not worried about getting it in every wee nook because the black gives us that uh, back in contrast. Yeah, it gives, a nice, gives it. a nice background. Yep. Yep. So what I would normally do after this, let that dry and then a couple of coats of sand sealer or uh, lacquer, clear lacquer uh -huh. over the top of the, the rim just. Just using the lacquer just to seal it in. So it yeah, stays. just a stairs there, you know. Hmm. Uh, I think it would stay there on its own, but a uh, wee bit of lacquer helps uh, protect it. Mm -hmm. These tend to fly 
all over the place. So it's a good job. Yeah, it's a bit like glitter. It's stay, you'll find yeah. it for weeks. They're floating around here like a mm-hmm. nobody yeah, business, see them. you know. Uh, Not be easy if so you took it off the lathe and set it down and did it so, so gravity was helping too. Uh, I should do that. What's going on? I changed camera. Uh, I don't know if the camera shows it up better, but uh, I can see all the colors. It's uh, yeah. You may we, be we can't see, see the colors green. until you move it. Now, now it looks yeah. green to us. Before it, it just purple, looks like green. green. Yep. yep. And all you're doing is dabbing these on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a bit like gold just, leafing. You're just actually getting yeah, it to stick to the size. You've seen Steve use them, and uh, and mm-hmm. so Emma, it's just Tenny the same. Turner. I'm a Tenny Turner. <clears throat> Roger Kent says, "I'm glad to see you're doing live streams, Paul." Thank, Thank you. you. One can't but try. That's all we can do. Mm-hmm. So, you can go around the edge. Oh, should we err there? That'd be one of mine. I have no her left. <laughs> yeah, it's looking not too bad now. Yeah. Although all we can it see just, is green currently. It just gives a wee bit of something else to the outside of the bowl. Yes. Especially if, it, if you've got a, a plain looking piece of timber. I think a wee bit of decoration lifts lifts it and gives it a wee bit of definition to it. Yeah, it just adds a little something to it. Yeah. So that's all the uh, colours on. I'll try and uh, move this around in the camera. Maybe be able to pick that colours colours up. We will. Uh, you know. So I'll put this back in and get a wee blast to the. Aragon. What's that? And when the strands of the brush came out. Oh dear. Oh, got it. There's a normal brush hat. So I think it's not stuck. Mr. G says that's stunning, Paul. Well done. Well, I turned that and, around. Uh, Todd says, do you need to seal the glitter? Well, you, you don't really need to seal it, but uh, most people I've seen now are putting a coat of lacquer over the top. Yeah, to I would of... put a wee taste of lacquer over the top just to protect see, we can see that now is We can see that now is the bluey purpley colour. Yeah. But when you were in the overhead camera, it just looked pure green. Yeah. As you move around... Yeah, I can see purple and blue and green on it. Yep. Well, we can can a little bit too. Just just you rotate know. it there with your hand. Just let it spin a little bit with your hand. Yeah, we can see you can actually see the colours changing a little bit there. It looks better, you know, in person. Yeah, yeah it does. doesn't show it, 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 the best of it up. But we're so actually getting to see all the colours there. So it's good. Very nice. Just want. Just want that. Super piece. Clean it up with my fingernail here at the edge. And a wee bit. Bring it on. So I'll let this dry. And uh, I'll go over the, the outside. I, I w- I'm not going to put any lacquer on the inside. I'll just do the rim to help okay. attack that. And I think I've I went long enough for my first uh, that's, outing. Uh, that's an hour and 40 minutes you've done, Paul. <laughs> you could quit there. So... And you could finish I'll the ball put, later and then show us pictures on Facebook. Yeah, I'll, I'll put, put uh, I'll finish it later, give it an hour to dry, I'll take it off and reverse it into with a cool jaws and take the food off. And I'll put us some uh, pictures up. Okay. Thank you very much for taking the trouble to come over and uh, let's see. 
taking the trouble to come over and watch my first live. Excellent. Uh, I think I think it went all right. It was a good uh, job. But, well done, Paul. A bit of a ropey bit at the start, getting the right uh, tunnel to go on to, you know, but that's my fault. I we'll not, we'll fix know. that now, just in about five minutes. Well, I, I don't know it the best, <laughs> but we're getting there. Yes. So thanks very much. Uh, bring Bran in. Uh, where's my... Get the mouse. Find the mouse. Get the mouse. <laughs> there, there he is. Thank you very so, much. Congratulations. Again, that was... That was very well uh, done. Thank mate. you very much for coming in and uh, giving me all the help you've given me last night and this morning. You're welcome. For doing Anytime. earworm, you know. So You're that's welcome. it for from me from the shed here today. <coughs> and I look forward to uh, doing an R piece next Monday. Next Monday is right. Good man. So all the best, guys. Say cheerio. All, all, all you have to do now is press the end stream button. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Okay, Brent. Talk to you later. Right, right guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye everybody.